Okay, I've always wanted to try to make a uh, DIY clip, so I'm going to give it a go here. Have you got one of these? If you have one of these, it likely uses one of these. A fluorescent tube. Uh, mine's kind of old, and it stopped working uh, a couple months ago. I uh, went to uh, Lowe's and bought a new uh, fluorescent tube bulb. Put it in and of course it didn't work so at that point i realized that my problem was a little bit bigger than just the lamp uh, and i began to take it apart and i found this part here now this is a uh, transformer um, and i believe uh, it is the culprit now i'm no electrician uh, but but uh, and i don't really how to test the device uh, but given it's really the only other thing that's in the lamp um, I had to assume that this was defective. So, you know, doing what I do, I sit down and search on the internet as best that I can, and I find a couple of these devices. Um, and they're not cheap, they're not expensive, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so I'll order one of these, put it in, and fix this lamp. Because I really like this lamp. Of course, as I get older, I need the magnifier, and uh, the light really helps uh, uh, on the bench. So, um, while looking for the part, this part here, I stumbled across a couple of guys that had uh, looked at LEDs, so, um, or converting it to LEDs. So you can actually buy rings that are made uh, for this kit to, to kind of do it, but they're a little bit pricey. And uh, being the cheap guy that I am, I decided, no, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to try and, uh, and do my own. So uh, this clip here is to give you a little tutorial on what I did. Uh, to get to a point uh, that my light uh, lets me do this. So bear with me here as I work my way through my first DIY clip. Drip. Uh, if I can figure out how to actually put a URL link inside of a YouTube clip, I'll do that. If I can't, I'm pretty sure that if you just go in and type in LED strips, you'll find uh, all sorts of different hits. I ordered it from somewhere in China. It took a little bit longer than forever to get here. Um, and this particular one, you'll notice, uh, if I can just pull this out, you'll notice if I bring this up to the camera, that it's got a little bit of a bubble on it, and it's actually supposed to be water uh, resistant or waterproof, uh, although I don't plan on submerging my light. Um, it comes with a, uh, with a power supply. Uh, it comes with the connector, it comes with uh, two connectors, one that's on the end of the, the strip to begin with, and another one of these little connectors that allows you to put uh, the two positive and negative leads in there and then plug it into the power supply. Uh, the power supply, it runs off, uh, converts, you know, households 120 into, uh, into 12 volt DC. So once you have your parts, uh, then you'll need to gather uh, the tools, and I'll show you the tools that I've uh, that I've used to to do this project. One second. So um, okay, I'm going to explain the tools that I used uh, on this project. But just before I do that, I should just get into uh, some of the other bits and pieces that you'll need. So uh, if you take a look at this lamp, um, you will notice that the, I had to replace the switch. The switch that comes with these, if it's the tube type. It's a special type of switch that's designed to kickstart or provide a, a higher voltage to the, to the, from the ballast to the fluorescent light to get the gases started to ignite the light. Um, that switch wasn't going to work for a DC circuit, so uh, I went into uh, my bits and pieces uh, box and I sourced, uh, um, well originally a push button switch which I installed and eventually broke, and now I've moved to just a simple toggle on or off switch. I had to make a little bit of a plate here uh, because the hole is uh, rectangular um, and the uh, the switch here is circular so I had to, to do a little bit of plate so I'll explain that also in just a second. Um, some other bits and pieces that you'll need to uh, to get is you're going to need to get some wire to solder the uh, the LEDs together. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll show you a couple mistakes that I made. I went and bought some 16 gauge uh, black and red from uh, Lowe's. Uh, that turned out to be entirely too heavy for what I was doing. I then went to uh, a little store here uh, called Active uh, Electronics and I bought uh, some 22 gauge um, uh, stranded wire um, which would have done the trick but it was because some of the runs, and I'll show you in a second, were so short 
the braided wire started to prove uh, to prove difficult. So uh, I actually had a whole bunch of uh, bell wire that uh, that was garbage that I had from different jobs I've done, and it's basically yeah, I think it's 22 gauge as well, but it's uh, it's solid core wire. And what I did, it's, it was this four wire I just stripped out and I used the black and red from that. And I'll, and I'll show you how, uh, how I did that later on. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some of the tools. So you're going to need a uh, soldering iron. Uh, you're going to need a uh, solder. Uh, I had this funky little clip from my dad that helps me hold things while I'm soldering. I used it a little bit, not, but not a lot. Uh, I use these little tweezers uh, to help hold wires very closely. Uh, if you've got them, these are uh, these are pretty decent wire strippers. But if you don't have them, you don't need them because uh, you can use uh, side cutters. Now I use two different types of side cutters. I had the larger ones and I had the smaller ones, and the same thing for the needle nose pliers. Uh, I had a, uh, a really and this is important. Make sure if you can that the blade is super sharp. I had a good sharp knife, and uh, I had a bunch of screwdrivers. Uh, one was to take the back off the lamp, so the ballast was originally in this lamp right here. And uh, I had to take it out and uh, and take it all apart. And these little Phillips screws was why I used that screwdriver. I used these um, jewelry screwdrivers, if you will, um, to help hold the wires in place as I was soldering. You'll notice in a minute when I show you some of the solders, their short, wires are very short. Uh, obviously, you can't use your fingers. Even the tweezers would have been a little bit, uh, you know, not good. So I used uh, the, um, the the jewelry screwdrivers to hold the wire gently in place as I soldered it. Um, so that's pretty much the tools that I've used uh, to, to do this project. So let me just take this lamp, let me just spin it upside down and let me just show you what I've done. So if you take a look now, I took out the ballast. Uh, there was a plate in here that looked uh, like this that was covering up bits and pieces. Um, I took that plate out. And, and you'll know, you know, if you look at the lamp at the back side, and the, it's, it's kind of rounded, if you will. And how did I, you know, get, uh, get it so it would sit flat? Well, I took, uh, I had a big chunk of styrofoam. I cut the styrofoam out. I took this little, the uh, magnifier out. I took this, a piece of styrofoam and I cut it to a size and I put it in. And, uh, and it basically, I pushed it as hard into the, into the lamp as I could and it made for a flat surface. I then took some basic white melamine board um, I can just get some, another piece around, and I don't, but basically, uh, it was just a piece of, uh, a one eighth inch, uh, uh, white board. I bought it Lowe's. Uh, I did the same thing. I used the, the lamp as a template. I cut it out. Uh, one thing to note, uh, when you, if you're doing this is these lamps are round on the outside. Uh, but on the inside, it's a bit oblong. So this is actually a little wider over here than it is over here. So just be careful of that. Cause it's important that you know that later on. Uh, so uh, I cut it to the circle and then I took the, the uh, LED strips and as you can see the, the adhesive on the back is not exactly sticking perfectly well on all of these. I've got to sort that out yet. Uh, i got two that are not behaving, um, but I'll be able to fix those. Uh, and you can hear as I squeeze it, I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear the styrofoam in the background uh, basically um, uh, flexing. And what I did is I, is I cut it and when I put it in, I just gave it a little bit of a twist because it is oblong. It sort of binds itself in there. There's nothing else holding this piece of wood in here other than, uh, compression. You'll notice it actually moves a little bit. Uh, I was thinking that if it wouldn't stay, what I could do is I could bend these clips, which were originally in place to hold the, uh, the fluorescent tube. Uh, but I opted that that was, it really wasn't needed because it was uh, holding itself well. And just to give me some extra level of brightness, I actually put a, an LED strip in around the circumference of the inside wired off of the last strip. So uh, let me talk about uh, this job here. First, I want to explain about cutting these strips. It's really quite straightforward. Um, you, take, uh, you take the strip uh, that you're looking for, you, to use, uh, and you'll notice that uh, the sections, uh, if you can get close enough here as I move in with the camera, the sections have little copper uh, tabs. And if you look really close, you'll notice that it says plus and minus. It tells you uh, the voltage. So you just take a pair of scissors, which I forgot to tell you that I use. So I had a pair of uh, what we call lineman scissors. And basically you just, uh, you just cut it on the, on the scissor mark. Um, now I had to do that on this lamp uh, to be able to make sure that I could go around. I was, I, you know, I hemmed and I hawed when I cut these into a bunch of little pieces. I hemmed and I hawed 
you know, was I going to go like this? Well, they're too wide. Okay, so I could I go on an angle? I could, but that would be really messy with the wiring. So then I opted, hmm, this is probably the neatest. Hopefully it'll be uh, bright enough. Uh, and you know what? I think it is. I think it's as, at least as bright as it was with the fluorescent. It's a little bit of a different type of light. Uh, but when you're using the magnifying lamp, uh, you're, you know, you're up close and, and the light works quite well. And if I can, I'll see if I can get a camera shot of that, of that working. Um, okay, so... Um, let me just a little tip about cutting these um, and, and, and making available the solder tabs. So, let me just see if I can zoom down here. Whoops, the camera's going to fall over. It's not good. So, when, when you cut these, you want to put it on the bench. You want to take your knife and you want to very carefully put a score in the rubber compound. Um, and what you're doing is... You're just trying to score it enough that you can actually put a bend in it. And then you take your knife and you cut. I can't, I'm not sure if you can see this. But you cut it until you feel the, ru the rubber is not giving you the resistance. And you just ever so slightly feel the paper. Once you do that, you can then peel this piece of, of um, um, weather protectant or whatever it is. Uh, you can peel it off and it exposes these uh, these solder tabs here and here and uh, once you've done that on both ends you're ready to you know put it on the lamp and work your way around it takes a little bit of time this is not a project that you're going to do in 10 minutes um, but uh, it uh, that's the way that I did it and you got to be really careful because you'll notice if you peel the um, the sticker off here Give me one second here peel that off behind is the actual circuit layer and on a couple of instances um, the connections for these tabs here and here are right on the edges and I had cut too far and then when I you know started soldering you know of course I had opens because I had cut the actual wire the solder was good but the wire was cut and I ended up having to replace that little you know one two three LED strip now um, if you're doing this, uh, it's pretty straightforward, positive to positive, negative to negative, and you make a series all the way around and you work your way around the lamp, and I'll show you that in just a second. So a uh, trick to cutting these is, again, score, bend it over, slowly saw it until you feel the, um, until you feel the, the difference in texture between the rubber and the paper. And once you start to feel that, you stop, and then you use your fingernails if you've got them. If not, you wait for your fingers to get really sore. <laughs> and you slowly peel back the rubber and you have to do both sides. Okay, so once that's done, um, and what I opted to do first is, and I'll just show you the lamp again, is I basically did them all. I, uh, you know, I peeled them all off and I put them all on and I positioned everything and I did it such that the inside ring could, could be, you know, um, as far apart as possible by while well, still getting as many as many in as possible and the reason I wanted it far apart is these connections and I'll just grab the screwdriver to point these connections here these soldering connections are very tricky to do oh look at that the little lights coming out when I do that I don't know why that is but anyways um, so uh, yeah so when you solder it uh, once you get all of them placed then you go and you put little solder tabs on all of the uh, on all of the the solder tabs, if you will, of the lights themselves, and uh, and you do that because uh, it makes soldering easy. Um, to uh, to strip the wire, uh, it was uh, pretty straightforward. I, what I opted to do is I would take the wire, I would measure it so that I would have just enough on one tab. Then I would do the other tab. I score it a little bit with my pliers, and then strip it now I've got an end now that end is is this is the length of both tabs I would then break my lamp I would then come over here and I would uh, basically measure it and cut it and then I would slide the insulation to be in the middle so just give me a second to refix my mounting mechanism and uh, and then we'll uh, continue on here okay so I have managed to just break the mounting mechanism uh, so, but uh, it's not completely broken, so we're okay. Uh, so, uh, this is going back to the uh, soldering technique. So, uh, basically what I would do is I would use these little tweezers. Once I had my stripped wire, which I seem to have lost. So, basically what I would do is I would take it. 
I would measure the distance that I would want. I would then cut it and then take my really good needle nose pliers. I would hold the one end like like that and then I would slide the insulation and then basically what you end up with is a wire like that that has um, strippings on both ends. I would then use my tweezers to hold the wire like that and then I'd put it on the board and I would tap it with the iron and then I would grab my screwdriver and that's why I have the jewelry screwdrivers basically I would hold the wire down the other side and then I would tab it with uh, with the iron on that side and I would work my way around it's very tedious I have to tell you it doesn't uh, like I said it's not something you're gonna do in 10 minutes um, but once I had basically destroyed the lamp I was trying to point of no return and uh, while I could still use it as a magnifying glass I really wanted to to have the the light function working of it these little sticky things are really driving me crazy but we'll figure that out as we go I just literally finished this a few minutes ago um, so so that's kind of it in a nutshell and what I opted to is so so basically you'll see um, if I just move the lamp down a little bit more there we go so what I did and where's my screwdriver here we go so the wire, these wires come off of the switch. Um, so I use the lamp wire that's on it to carry the, the DC voltage up from the bottom. And I'll take the bottom apart in a minute and just show you what I did down there. But essentially, uh, I used that. I'm, I, I used uh, my multimeter um, just to prove out uh, which lead was which because you have to make sure that you, know, you keep positive to positive and negative to negative. You don't want to cross it and short it out. You could blow the LEDs. I haven't done it yet. I don't know if it would, but it, let's not find out, if you will. So uh, I used the meter just to source that out, and I put a black mark on the positive. I know people say, why wouldn't you do the negative? And I'm like, I don't know. I just decided that was what I was going to do. So it comes in into the housing in here. Um, I, I soldered two leads onto my switch, and I basically I opted to, uh, to switch the uh, positive side. Um, I did some reading on DC circuits. You can switch either side you want. Uh, but on the outside chance that it's grounded, you want your ground to, to, main, to be uh, to maintain, and that was my theory, right or wrong, and you guys can debate me, but that's what I did. So I switched the positive lead, and uh, and as you know, as I showed you, it works. So, um, so the the switched lead, and then I just uh, I pigtailed on a black lead onto the lamp, and that's why you see the black and the red lead here. Let's see if I can get a light on this. So you can see the black, and these are the source leads coming from the underside of the switch. Um, and then I just worked from this lamp, which refuses to stay. I'm going to have maybe put a little touch of crazy glue on that. And I just worked my way around, 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 around. And when I got back to here, I jumped out to the second ring. And positive to negative, and worked my way around. And when I got back again, uh, here, sorry, on the second ring, I jumped out to the third ring, and I went around. And then when I came back, I went, I could still fit another three in here and a three in there. Um, but then I thought, you know what, instead of doing that, what I'll do is I'll take what I have left over, and I still have some left, is, and I'll run a, a, a bead around the inside of the perimeter, and that will be what it, that, enough. So um, the end result is that it, uh, it works pretty good. Um, what I'll do is, uh, is I'll just show you, uh, uh, give me a minute, I've got to take the lamp off the, uh, the mount down here, uh, take off the back plate and just show you what I did down there. So give me one second. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the back cover uh, of the lamp down here. Uh, there was two screws in here that was holding it. That's what I just took out while I was on pause. And this plate um, pops off. And then in the old days, if you will, this is what was uh, this is what was in here. It was the transformer. Uh, and then the lamp cord uh, feeding the transformer uh, came out of this hole down at the bottom of the plate. Uh, so with all that removed, it leaves a bit of a cavity in here, and I was having a problem with the lamp rocking, so I had to change the uh, the hold screw that holds the shaft from the lamp in the box. So I changed that, and I ended up with a with a larger screw pinching it, um, and I'll and that's why I had to drill a hole in the plate uh, so to allow that screw to uh, to protrude. Um, so if you oh, Dave. there we go, okay. that cover off all right so if you take a look this is the connection for the lamp um, 
basically if when you when you get the uh, the LED strip this connector right here is actually on the end of the strip uh, right there uh, and uh, what I did is I cut it off strip the wires and then just pigtail pigtailed it with some rets as you can see there's my black mark marking the positive tuck the wires in here and then I ran this lead um, this is this comes from the power supply down below this is the power source and I just basically ran that up and uh, sorry about that let me just get my camera set here I basically ran the, the lead up put it through the, um, the hole of the plate uh, and then I plug it in that and then I tuck the the plug-in aspect of it in the box and then I just take the plate and I just put the plate uh, on it and the reason the plates important I didn't realize this is that this plate this screw and this screw uh, on this these two screws actually help maintain the boxes integrity because there's a fair amount of torsion on that mount pin and if you don't put those in the box will actually start to bend so uh, that's an FYI, just wanted to let you know about that. Alright, so I'm just going to go back on pause for a second. I'm going to put my box back together and put the lamp back on the mount right here. And uh, I'll just uh, close off with uh, some final comments. Okie dokie. Uh, so, final comments is... Um, this is the, uh, the metal plate that was actually in the lamp on the underside of the lamp. And I just used the metal blade on my jigsaw and I cut... Um, I cut this plate, I cut another one on the inside that the switch, and that, that, and that prevents the switch from being pushed through from the inside, and then I just used the nuts to tighten it down. I opted to have the switch uh, on the back side to be off, and on is on the front. Um, so overall, this is not really a hard project to do. I really wasn't sure how it was going to turn out when I, when I started off. Um, I really like having a lamp on my bench, uh, especially because my eyes kind of get sucky if, as I'm getting older. Uh, and the magnifier aspect of things is, um, is, is, you know, a key aspect for me. So, you know, if you're looking at a, if I'm looking at a box or something, I, you know, I'll bring the lamp down like that. I'll, uh, this, I'll look at it through the, uh, through the, uh, through the lamp. Oops, hang on a second. This thing uh, needs to be tightened a little bit. Um, like that and sometimes you know if I don't have my desk lamps on that are on the sides I can't really read it so I turn that on and you know it makes a huge difference um, I'm really happy with how it turned out uh, it's uh, you know these lamps are not cheap if you're to try to buy a new one I've seen them anywhere between uh, 80 and 300 bucks depending on the quality and, uh, and whatnot um, and if you just want it as a bench light it you know it helps illuminate from an ambient perspective not bad not great, but not bad. Uh, but really, you know, for what you're using it for, which is close proximity to, to the magnifier, it works well. So uh, that's it uh, for my DIY clip. Um, like I said, it's, uh, you know, if you know basic DC circuits and you don't even really need to know circuits, just keep red to red, black to black, positive to positive, negative to negative. Uh, work your way through. If you're, you got to know how to use uh, one of these little fan angled things called a soldering iron uh, not too tricky it just takes a little bit of time maybe you want to practice with some technique uh, on on some wire that uh, isn't part of your lights you can by the way you know when you're soldering these you can overheat them so that's why I put a little tab of solder on the soldering tab itself uh, just to get it to adhere and uh, helps avoid what they call cold solders which are sometimes solders that look like they're adhered to but all of a sudden will come off at a future point in time um and uh, that's it so uh this gets to go in the garbage because it may or may not work and i really don't care uh and uh my lamp is back so thanks very much uh if you found it useful great if you didn't great uh it was my first diy uh, video and uh, i'm gonna put it up on youtube and you know if you guys have a burnt out light uh you might be able to resurrect it thank you very much cheers